Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about my experience and my journey as an engineer. Um, ever since I've been posting videos and you guys found out that I'm an engineer, you've been asking me questions. So I've been taking a mental note of all the questions that you guys have been asking me and I decided to film a full video telling you what my experience was like and hopefully you can get something from this video and let's just jump into it because I think this is going to be a long one. I tried filming this before and it was just so long and I just felt like it was so boring but if you're interested in seeing that video I will put the link um, in the description. It's a unlisted video but if you have the link you can just click it and you'll see the video. As you guys know I'm from the Bahamas and I left high school at grade 11 because I qualified to take all my like exams early and once I passed those my aunt suggested that I go straight to college and me and my cousin did this did the same thing and we both enrolled in college when we were 16 and I went to the College of the Bahamas which is now University of the Bahamas and I my major was math but after thinking about it I knew that I didn't want to stay in math but because it was such a fast decision for me to go to college I just picked that because I thought that um, I was good at math but I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to get into but I knew it wasn't forever so I, I was in math I was there for two years and I knew that I wanted to do something different and I wanted to go to school in the United States so I was thinking and I was talking to my aunt one day and I was like I don't I don't want to do math she was like why don't you try engineering and I was like hmm that sounds like interesting but I'm like terrified to do it because it sounds like it's super hard and I was like I'm never one to shy down from a challenge and I like to push myself so I decided to enroll in civil engineering and I'm gonna talk about my journey with that in high school I was always I always got good grades um, but I wasn't the best in physics so, so I thought when I got to college physics was gonna be hard for me but I realized that I didn't really apply myself in, in high school which is why I didn't do that well so when I got to college a lot of classes that I had to take were I'm pulling up I had to take chemistry with the lab I had to take a writing class a technical writing class a, I had to take calculus 1 2 and 3 and also differential equations I had to take general physics with the lab uh, physics with calculus um, I had to take general chemistry 2 with the lab I had to take a computer tools class I had to take an ethics class materials lab and class dynamics which was really difficult for me fluids with a lab structural analysis engineering economy environmental engineering with a lab surveying which was a really nice class I liked that one I had to take a geotechnical class which I really liked as well um, a reinforced concrete a water and water resources project planning I had to do some electives I think I chose like a steel design and some other class I had to do I had to do transportation engineering uh, statistics that one was a little bit difficult and you also take like humanities and social sciences and I also had to take a senior design project which people always talk about their senior design project and how it was so hard and how it was so difficult I don't know if it was because my team was really good but it was smooth that class was smooth for me smooth for me the hardest part was that we had to do like I think four presentations or three and that was really hard because we had to speak for a certain amount of time and you you couldn't like have any notes you had to memorize everything and like you know present it in front of like a, a panel of people so that was the hardest thing and also before you graduate you have to pass the FE which is the fundamental engineers exam or the or you have to take the class and I didn't really know what the FE was when I got into college so that's something that you should research before you go into college because it's an exam that a lot of employers kind of expect you to have or expect you to get once you get into their company so that's something that you should think about um, once again it's called the fundamental engineers exam so I took that exam, I took the class and I also took the exam and I passed the exam and now I have my FE license. Uh, a lot of you were telling me that you are pretty civil engineering or you're like you want to take engineering or you're in engineering now and it's really hard. I think that after a few classes 
taking engineering, even though it might be hard, you'll know whether like you're in the right place or not. If you're interested in the material, if you think that's it's gonna be an interesting career, it's not what you study in school is not exactly like the career, but it, it, it like kind of helps you for the career, and it's like an insight into the career. But just because a class is hard doesn't mean that you're not cut out to be an engineer. You know, you just have to push through and work hard and you know study. So. That's my advice. Like, I think that you don't have to be the smartest person in the class. You just have to be the most hardworking. So I felt like in my engineering classes, a lot of people were smarter than me. But the reason I got good grades is because I really applied myself and I studied hard and I made sure that I got good grades. I don't think that the GPA matters when you want a job. But if you're paying to go to school and you want to be a civil engineer, like, why not do the best in your classes and get the best GPA? And I'm not talking about people who are like doing classes and working and they might not have the time to study, but you don't have to put your GPA on your resume. So employers will never know what your GPA was, but it's nice to have a high GPA and it's nice to like actually learn what you're studying for and actually do well in your classes because it makes you feel better about yourself. I don't know about you, but it, it did for me. Somebody also asked me what was how was my experience between school and versus work now? Um, school is easier than work in the sense that if I didn't want to go to class, I knew that the only person I would be letting myself down is myself. Um, but it was more flexible and also classes, like you would have a few classes a day, then you have the rest of the day off, or you would have a day off. But with work, it's like constant work and you don't have time off and it's just constantly working, 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 and if I don't want to go to work, I can't just one day wake up and say, hey, I don't want to go to work because, I mean, obviously that's bad as an employee, but you're also letting down, not yourself, but a whole company, so that's the hardest thing, and with work, I don't really study, and I don't have to learn new things all the time, but I do work harder working than I did in school, because school, you have a few assignments, you Whenever there's an exam, you just study the few weeks before that. But with work, it's just like constant working, working, working. So um, you have to be very organized and dedicated in both. But school, I found school to be much easier. Uh, it also really depends on your job too, because I'm I work in forensics right now. So we and I work 40 hours, so it's a lot of work. So let's get into what I do right now. Right now, I am a staff engineer in a forensic company. And we mostly look at residential buildings, condominiums, and civil work. So I could find myself doing from developer turnover reports to doing a civil design. A, um, I do a lot of projects where we work with the insurance company. When the homeowners association is claiming damage, we go in and we work for the insurance and we check whether these damages were related to hurricanes or not and we write reports on that and we record a lot of data and do data analysis after we record the data and then we give our opinion on what we think happened and why that there was damage. I do a lot of research, a lot of code research. I is a lot of documenting and a lot of producing results so that's what I do mostly in forensic engineering. I am planning on taking my PE license, which is the Professional Engineer's License, which comes after the FE license. And you get that once you have four years experience and you have to take a another exam, which is harder than the previous exam. Uh, but once you get that, you can stamp and sign uh, reports, you can sign drawings, and that's like the final step as the final license as an engineer, like a, like a general license. And once you get that, like you, you bump up in salary, you get more, um, you get a higher position, you get more responsibility. So that's something that I am planning on getting in the near future. I plan on taking my exam soon. And I also, I, I do not have four years experience. I have almost two years. So once I get my four years, then the PE license will kick in, but it'll help me if I get my, if uh, the hardest part is doing the exam. So I want to get that out of the way. So keep that in mind if you want to be an engineer too. Not all companies require it. My company is not pressuring me to get it. This is something that it's a personal goal, but it also like if you don't want to be stunted in growth, this is something that you should do for yourself. 
I feel like I picked the right career for myself and only you will know whether you're in the right career as you're taking classes, as you're doing research, you'll know whether this is the thing that you want to do. It'll become apparent to you once you're in the right field while you're taking your classes and also doing research to see if this is something that you actually want to do. It's a really good career. You start off salary really high, more than high, higher than other careers. And from, I know this from experience and also my friends doing other careers, like you start off higher. And I love engineering. I liked studying it in college and I also think that I picked the right career for myself because I like going to work, I like the people I surround myself with and I just feel really accomplished and it's really awesome to see like when you work on a project you get to so show somebody and be like hey I worked on that project and being an engineer like the most ethical thing is like you're working for the welfare and the well-being of like the community of the public so it's really cool to, to know that you're actually helping people and you're doing work that's like beneficial to the public so like it's not the most fun job and obviously like you don't have to love every aspect of your job but if you feel fulfilled and you like what you're doing every day and it's not dreadful for you to go to work then you know that you're in the right position but i love engineering let me know if you guys have any more further questions that i can answer down below and i hope this video was informative and I will talk to you guys later. I have a lot of other videos coming. I have a lot of decor videos coming. I will be decorating my childhood home in the Bahamas for this Christmas and I'm gonna do it as a gift to my brother and my mom because they both live there. That's gonna be super interesting. Um, it's gonna be very budget friendly and it's gonna be um, DIY. So stay tuned for that. That's gonna be really awesome. I can't wait for that. And I also have my law video coming up soon. I'm just waiting for a few more pieces to come in the mail and then I will be filming that. But let me know if you have any other questions. Let me know if there's something that I didn't get into um, in this video. And I'm not going to be talking about salary, my salary, or like what your salary could be. Because if you want to see that, you can do some research. Because I'm not an expert on it and I don't want to give you false information. And I don't want to put my business out there either. And I can't really give you interview tips because... I'm not the best at them, so I would say watch other people that are really good at interviews. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that you can watch and TikTok where they give you interview tips. But that's all I have for today. See you guys later, and thanks for watching. Bye.